Hello, everybody. Oregon and New Mexico are now going to go into another lockdown. Apparently, it's only going to be for two weeks. I don't think so. I think it's going to be a lot longer. I don't think anybody actually thinks it's going to be two weeks. Now, I could give you the background, the details, and I'm going to post sources regardless into the description box below like I you know, always do. I could go into the deaths and then the the people who have been tested positive and all that sort of stuff in Oregon. Or it could just give you guys kind of a more personalized story because I feel like everybody's over the statistics. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure everybody gets the point. We all have an understanding about what exactly is going on. So to personalize this, Oregon just got, uh, there's a chart that Oregon has, background real quick. Top 10 worst days ever in Oregon, in terms of the, the COVID cases that we have. The last 10 days have been the worst 10 days so far. So most of my friends work in the, I think it's called the hospitality industry. Yes, I should know this. I worked in there at one point in time. <laughs> my friends work there. Everybody's getting laid off. Sometimes the second time, sometimes even the third time. Most of these people are getting laid off. Okay, my background on this. So I needed to get surgery on both my feet. Yes, both my feet. I worked at Amazon once upon a time as a researcher and I also worked into their, their warehouses. I busted both my feet. Amazon refused to pay for it. And I had to figure out how I was gonna do that. So first of all, you have to gain the finances to do that. And then also on top of that, you have to schedule the surgery. So I scheduled a surgery. When I had the surgery dates for both feet, yes, both feet at the same time, I had the surgery eventually, so it, it worked out. But they had to cancel the surgery. So I'm a guy who had two busted feet. I already had a three year long injury spree up until that point. And then I busted my feet, totally separate case. COVID happened, had to cancel the surgery. So I'm walking on busted feet. It's pretty much what happened. So we, everybody goes back to work for the most part, you know, modified, lowered, reduced regulations. I guess that was the best way to put it. I ended up getting surgery. Right after I got surgery, my landlord told me that he actually wanted to sell the house I was living in. So then I had to pack up and I had to move everything with two busted feet, loaded to the gills on, on pain meds and all that fun stuff, which I'm not gonna lie. I'm really not a fan of the pain meds. I took them for a few days and just called it good. Landlord was a homie. He actually moved my stuff for me into a new place. Well, a homie, cause he stole the place, you know, you, you got the point. So then you have to work out the finances. Eventually, my goal was to get back into MMA and boxing. That's my background. I've been doing it for the last seven years. So my goal was I need to get back to that period of time in my life because that's something that I enjoy. So now that I just got the surgery, now we're getting ready to go do that. However, one of the problems with that was that now that I'm at the point where I just got the surgery, I'm about to start it, and then we find out we're going into another lockdown, everything's closed. Most of these businesses are going to shut down forever, for good. I walk out earlier today, I see somebody I know, sitting at their table, it's my friend's roommate. She's sitting there with a glossed over look in her face. And so I walk over, see how she's doing. And she's like, man, I'm gonna be unemployed again, yet again. We have to ask ourselves, what are we gonna do moving forward? How exactly does this end? There is a study by, let's see, Northwestern University, Northeastern University, Rutgers, and Harvard. They launched a study on 40,000 people who attended the protest nationwide. Now they concluded that there has been no increase in the amount of COVID cases as a result of the protest, but I'm confused. I'm genuinely confused because even if the safety precautions are followed, face masks, social distancing, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Apparently that is enough to be able to stop the spread of COVID with large groups of over a thousand people. Oregon now has a regulation to stop groups larger than five people. I'm curious as to what would happen if we were to incorporate those standard safety policies and procedures that resulted in a no spike increase 
in COVID cases, according to four different universities. What if we were to incorporate that now? Because according to that logic, shouldn't we not have an increase in cases? Why are we stopping everything? That's my point. And why are people on the right not believing in science? We can sit here all day. I know what you're thinking. Well, because Trump said it. I get it. I get it. I get it. My point is, life is clearly difficult for pretty much everybody right now. What would happen if we were to create more modifications in daily life, for example, ensuring that the people who have families to go to, that they have access to all the face masks, all the social distancing, everything needed. You create a movement where you modify life. Because if the protests work, I'm pretty sure being able to see our families would work too. Maybe, just maybe, that type of modification would motivate your aunt, uncle, grandpa, whoever that doesn't believe in COVID. Maybe the hope of them being able to see you, with the exception that they have to wear their face mask, maybe that's enough for them to take a second look at the science thing that we've all been talking about. Food for thought.